Some hardware VTAPs have interesting problems when you want to do routing from VXLAN to VLAN. Here is the full story. If you go from VLAN to VXLAN, then the packet is coming in. Obviously, the hardware has to match the gateway MAC address. So the hardware has to say, OK, this is my MAC address. Go into layer 3 code. Then the hardware would do layer 3 lookup, find the next hop, and the encapsulation information associated with the next hop would include the full VLAX slang header and the outgoing interface. No problem, rewrite, send the packet. This part works on any hardware. This part is more interesting. If a packet comes from VXLAN and goes to a physical server, then the silicon here has to match on the VTAP first. It has to realize that the packet is sent to the switch itself, it's not to be forwarded, and that the packet is a VXLAN packet that has to be further processed. Then the switch needs to decapsulate the VXLAN packet, do MAC lookup, and realize yet again that, oh, yet again, it's for me. So I need to do another IP lookup and then rewrite the destination MAC header and send the packet. This sequence is too much for existing Trident 2 chipset. It looks like Intel FM6000 can do it. We know that Trident 2 can't do it at line rate. Cisco solved this problem on the Nexus 9300 by adding its own ASIC, which does this part. And Nuage solved this by recirculating the packet. So there are two ways you solve that problem. The first way is you go with distributed routing functionality. So that when a packet comes from a physical server on a VLAN and is routed onto a VXLAN segment, the top of rack switch does the routing functionality, which works, not a problem. But when the packet goes from a VM to a physical server, then the hypervisor does the layer 3 lookup, already routes the packet into a destination subnet. So you see, this is subnet A, this is subnet B, and now the packet is already in subnet B, but it's still on the VXLAN side of the world. And then the hardware VTAP does only bridging. So it does routing from VLAN to VXLAN, or it does bridging from VXLAN to VLAN. Cisco, as I said, added its own ASIC to fix this problem. And Nuage uses an interesting trick. What they do is you have whatever number of 10 gig ports you have in Trident 2 chipset. And they use some of these ports for external connections and some of these ports for internal loopbacks. So when you need to route, we want to route from VXLAN to VLAN, first you bridge into a VLAN, and then you send it over, and then you route and send it out. Obviously, you're limited by the performance of these internal loopback links, and they are pretty open in what the default is, and you can add additional external loopbacks if you need more performance. The limitation is well documented in their documentation. Of course, you have to ask yourself, do I need a top of rack switch? In most cases, you don't. If you're running everything on the overlay networks internally, and the only physical endpoints are reachable across the WAN, then obviously the maximum you need are WAN link speeds. And these are tens of gigabits. And usually you need some load balancer or firewall anyway. So you don't need a top of rack hardware gateway for this. If, on the other hand, you are integrating 
a VM with a physical server. For example, this is a database, a DB2 server running on AX. Then the maximum performance you need is whatever this box can generate. And yet again, I wouldn't expect to get 10 gig from a DB2 server. A software gateway might be good enough. Obviously, if you are in a large scale environment where you need more than 10 gig, then you go for kernel based gateways that gets you up to 10 gig. Above 10 gig, you need a hardware gateway today. If I'm doing routing going in and bridging going out, how do I solve the high availability? The way this is usually solved is you would have two top of rack switches, and we'll go into details when we get to individual products. And these two top of rack switches would be in an MLAC pair. So you would put them in an MLAC pair, which means that they would connect to the VLAN side through a port channel, and they would connect probably to the IP transport network through a port channel as well. They would have the same IP address for uh, VTAP, so whichever one gets the packet would encapsulate or decapsulate. They would use the same IP address with HSRP, active active, for example, in Cisco case, or in Arista's case, it would be VRRP, active active. So going in, going from physical to virtual, they are both listening to the same IP and MAC address of the default gateway. So whichever one gets the packet over the port channel will send it over. Coming back, this VTAP IP address is any casted onto the transport network side. So whichever one would receive the bridged packet would send it out on the port channel. And there is no forwarding loop because we have a port channel here. 